Hey guys, I'm the Alex Man, and I have another wonderful how-to video for you today. Today we're working on the Forerunner, and uh, this is something I've wanted to do for quite a while. I've been gathering parts up and finally got everything I need, so let's look at what we're doing. So i got a pile of parts here in front of me. got some Old Man Emu uh, CS009R springs. These are the 2-inch lift medium-duty springs by Old Man Emu. Uh, that's the suspension division of ARB out in Australia. Also got a trail gear U-bolt flip kit here. Uh, and uh, when you do that, you lose that plate on the bottom of the axle that mounts the shocks. So I got some shock mounts that you weld onto the axle. And I got the bushings um, that go with the leaf springs. So this will be a fun install. Uh, I've been reading on Yodatech about some possible issues that I could run into here. Um, some people have reported pinion angle change, well they've reported vibrations most likely caused by a change in the pinion angle. Uh, something else that's specific to this install, the uh, the bushings are on the front of the, the springs, they require little spacers that go in the middle of them and you need to burn those out of your original bushings which means it's hard to go back to uh, to factory unless you get some new bushings from somewhere else. Alright, so if you have jack stands, you can just do this job on jack stands. I actually don't have jack stands that are tall enough to reach the frame on this vehicle. Um, and you can't put jack stands under the axle because you need to remove weight from the suspension. But it's okay, I have a four post lift. And uh, I've done this before to work on the rear axle. You can actually just, uh, I'm just going to back the truck up onto the lift and lift it from the bumper. Not the bumper, the, uh, the hitch receiver really. bumper on these vehicles is pretty flimsy. Okay, so we got the back wheels off the ground. Wheels are chalked. Also got hubs engaged, four low engaged, truck in first gear, so it's pretty much impossible for it to roll anywhere. Now we get to take the back wheels off. Oh, on. Alright, next is the drive shaft. There's just some 14 millimeter bolts holding this guy on. So we'll just take them off. There we go. Now we can take off these uh, these pins that hold the parking brake cable onto the parking brake lever. Clovis pin. I think that's what it's called. And then just reassemble it slightly so that this stuff doesn't all fall apart and get lost. Alright, before we get too much into this, I should probably say that you don't have to do everything I'm doing. I'm installing the U-bolt flip kit, but that's not necessary. You can install the old manium springs with the stock U-bolts. And, uh, and the stock plate at the bottom that holds the shock and not have a problem. But because I'm doing that, I have to weld on the shock mount tabs. Uh, and because I'm welding onto the axle, I was going to paint it as well, which means I'm removing the entire axle. It is possible to just remove the spring, leave all the brake hardware, you don't have to disconnect the drive shaft, uh, and all that sort of stuff. You can leave that all connected and just replace the spring. But I am doing the U-bolt flip kit, so I gotta remove all the parking brake cables, the brake lines, and everything. So that's what I'm doing. So the parking brake's been disconnected at both ends. Just gonna remove this little brace here. This is a bolt that's been on the rear axle of this truck since 1987. Bolt comes right out. I don't know what Toyota did, but they, I mean, their fasteners always seem to come loose. Unless, of course, you're talking about the frames. The frames rusted a lot on Toyota's, but I have never really had a problem with any of the fasteners on this truck. 
Something you may not have to do is disconnect your differential breather line. This is the modification I did so that the diff breather went up and vented out near the fuel filler uh, because the differential breather that's factory can suck in water if you go through some deep water. So disconnecting that. Here is the pivot parking brake. Oh, that's interesting. It's got a nut on the bottom. It's not well to the front. Put the nut back on. And then pull all this stuff out of the way. Next thing I'm going to remove is the shock absorber. Well, I'm not sure if this is actually the limit of my travel. We'll find out soon enough. We may have to jack the axle up to take load off the, off the shock. So there's two 17 millimeter bolts holding these shocks on. One at each end, of course. All right, we got the scissor jack under there. feels in like it's really in there. Got the top of it off. Compress it. Swing it down. Try to twist it a little bit. Alright, so I got the shock mounted back in here just temporarily and uh, I'm gonna mount I'm gonna mark the center line of the shock. That way I know where to weld the uh, the new shock mount on. Cool. So I got this funky looking thing in my hand, a piece of hose with two hose clamps and a bolt. What's that for? Well my idea is when I disconnect the brake lines, I'll slide this over the end of the brake line, clamp it down, and hopefully I won't lose too much fluid. This doesn't do anything about fluid coming in like between the line and the inside of the nut there, but uh, hopefully this will prevent me from having to bleed the brakes for, with a dry system. That's my main concern. Got myself a flare wrench here. I already took a toothbrush and cleaned off around this so that I don't get any dirt in my brake system. Looks like it works. Cool. Now I'll just do the same thing on the other side. Alright, so I've moved that brake line around. Now it's resting on top of the springs instead of underneath. Uh, I've also put in a generic 10 millimeter bolt here into the drums to keep them from getting any crud in them. Uh, not the drums, the wheel centers. They're actually the wrong size thread. These are 10 by 1.25, and the drums, all the brake hardware is 10 by 1.0. But it's okay, I just threaded it in like three quarters of a turn until it stopped, and then I left it there. So it's not really sealed, but that's okay. Um, the wheel centers don't hold that much fluid anyway, but it will keep all the nasty crap, you know, out of the wheel cylinders. So now the only thing supporting this axle is uh, the U-bolts. So I guess that's the next step. Underneath that plate there, there's four big nuts. So we're just gonna smash them out of there. You can see I got a hydraulic jack supporting everything, that way the axle doesn't just drop when it's not supported. All right, so I got a jack sand under the axle on this side. Now I'm going to move over to the other side, put the hydraulic jack there, and uh, remove those U-bolts. I guess I'll just have to leave this on here. It's fine because I'm not using this spring, this lower plate, or the U-bolt, but uh, I really could not get this, this bolt loose. It was pretty on there. So. Got myself a forerunner axle. Alright, so I ground down the axle uh, just to get it down to bare metal. And I got these things here and uh, measured up where I want them to be. So that's pretty good there. And we got the same thing going on right over here. So, pretty much the exact same thing. And uh, now I guess we're ready to tack them onto the, to the axle.
Alright, so there's the welds there. That's probably the best looking one. They're all about the same, really. Uh, but anyway, should be good. I washed it with soap and water, and then, uh, well, first I wire wheeled it, then I washed it with soap and water, and then uh, wiped it down with a damp rag, so. We'll just wheel this out into the sun, let it dry while we mess with the springs. Alright, so the next thing we have to deal with here is the, uh, the rear leaf springs. Even though this truck was it spent most of its life in New Jersey, and then five years in, uh, in Pennsylvania, it's got surprisingly little rust. But I've heard reports that uh, the bolts for the shackles and the bolts at the front of the spring are pretty much impossible to remove without cutting. Hopefully, we're going to have some good luck here. We'll find out soon enough. Alright, so that bolt there is 19 millimeters, and the head on the nut on the back side is also 19 millimeters. So, let's see if the uh, breaker bar will loosen that off. Ah, that wasn't even too bad. Keep in mind, you do need to reuse these with the old mini and the springs, unless you replace them with something else. I'm going to leave that in there, that way the spring doesn't just drop. Turn my attention to the shackles. So the shackles, uh, one side of the shackle has the bolt, and the other has the nut. The bolt is actually pressed into the, uh, to the shackle plate there, so you can see it doesn't even have a head on it. Anyway, let's see if we can loosen this guy up. Ah, that's fun. Alright, well, Top tip for you here, if you're doing this, uh, loosen these bolts before you take weight off the truck. Just loosen the nuts. You don't have to take them all the way out or anything, but... Shit. Okay. Got one loose. There, got them both loose. Now I gotta get the spring uninverted. No, see if this plate just comes off. Oh, this is beautiful. That's just beautiful. Came right apart. It looks like the springs can come right out too, so we'll let that happen. Alright, just lower it down. Sweet. That couldn't have been easier. Slide the shackle out of here. Beautiful.